Hello everybody, Terry Terry, back again with another video. Oh boy, oh boy, my tennis friends all around the world. You have been waiting for this video. People are commenting in my latest video and saying, say your words, say your thoughts, say your opinion. What do you think about Novak Djokovic's last defeat against the lucky loser Sonego from Italy? A player that we have barely heard about. And for you who doesn't know what lucky loser means, but I, 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 I expect that all of you knows. But if we have someone out there who doesn't know, lucky loser is a player who has not qualified for the tournament and some of the others who have qualified for some reason has got hurt or has got sick. Sick. And the lucky loser who has not qualified for the tournament, he get the spot to play the tournament. And Sonego, oh boy, oh boy, he has taken his opportunity. Man, what a match he did against Novak Djokovic. I didn't see the match live. I was working. I had a very, very long day at work yesterday. But of course, I've seen the match after. I've seen the highlights. I've seen very, very... Uh, long period of time of match of the match afterwards in replay and I've done a conclusion because uh, rumors are going around now Djokovic he tanked this match Djokovic was here just to win two matches to secure to to make to do to to secure that world and the world number one uh, in the of the year, which is goal is to equal or pistol Pete Sampras record with six world end number year, uh, and no Djokovic has done it now, guys. Uh, so, um, and many are saying that he tanked. He just went to the court just to really, uh, just to bail out more or less. Uh, what do I think about that? Did he tank really, guys? Look. I don't know Novak Djokovic personally. I have never met the guy. I have not talked with him. I'm not Marian Vaida. So I cannot know this for sure. But what I saw, I didn't see a player who was tanking. I just cannot imagine a world number one who will not play tennis next week or or the week thereafter. He's not he's not playing the Paris indoors. The next tournament he will play is in London, the ATP Tour Finals, which is a couple of weeks from now. And he is the tournament's biggest name, the world number one. He, the audience, the crowd comes to watch him play tennis. And him to tank, to tank. I don't think he did. I really don't think he did. Because he has the pressure the organizers, they they want him to go far because you know guys what it is. Djokovic, Nadal and Federer, they are superstars. They are rock stars. You know when rock stars come to a crowd when they want to, when they will do a music concert. All, everybody wants to see them, guys. It is a packed crowd. And when a world number one loses, the organizers doesn't get happy. I don't think Djokovic he doesn't want to make them disappointed. He really did. And when I say he doesn't want to make them disappointed, I'm, I'm not meaning that he cannot lose because he's a human being. Of course he can lose and he will lose. This is not any, any tragedy whatsoever. Absolutely not. But him to come to the court and tank with purpose, lose the match with purpose, I just don't think... It didn't look that way. But I have to say, he didn't play like his life was on the line. That he didn't, I have to admit. He would not play this kind of match if it was a Grand Slam. Or it, or if it was a Master 1000 final. Or it was, or, or if it was Federer or Nadal on the other side of the net. Because that is more pre prestige to beat your big two chief rivals. So, I'm not saying that he played like his life was on, on the line. Now, no, he didn't. Especially... In the second set, he didn't. You could, you could see that in some points, he did not even bother to go and try to hit the ball. But he tried. But Sonego, which I've actually not seen so much of him in the past. What has he done before? He's, four, he's the world number 42, I believe. He's 25 years old. He has won one tournament in his life, ATP tournament before, Antalya last year. So, 
Am I surprised that Djokovic lost against a lucky loser like him? Absolutely, I am. I cannot deny that. Am I surprised? Yes, I am. But I am shocked the way Djokovic lost. Djokovic only got three games. 6-1. I'm sorry, 6-2, six, 6-1. Six, Djokovic got a breadstick on the second set. So that I am shocked. That I didn't see coming. But that Djokovic is starting to lose more and more, no, I am not surprised. He will lose more and more. Trust me, he will lose more and more. He's not 25 years old anymore. He's 33 years old. And I'm seeing patterns that he's not doing things as good as before. And if you're smart up here, you can see that when he wins his matches, he's not doing that w without struggling. Look at how he won Cincinnati. He went, he got, he played three sets against, three sets against RBA. He plays three sets against Raonic. Look how he won Rome. He was not having an easy time in Rome either. Djokovic, in my opinion, he played much better tennis before this pandemic started in January, February, when he won a solo open and when he won Dubai. After the pandemic, he has won titles. He has won two titles, Cincinnati and Rome. But it is not like he has blown the players out of the court. It is not like he has dominated the players. It is not like he has crushed the players. It is not like he has been superior in any kind of way. He has won because he's clutch. He's a mental beast. In big moments, he wins. Look how he defeated Kranovic in the first match. A tight first set. Look at 7-6. Look how he defeated Bonacoric in the second match. 7-6 there as well, the first set. He wins his first two matches in Vienna. 7-6, 6-3, 7-6-6-3. Both the first and second match, he wins the first set in tie breaks. And the second and the second match in the tie break against Bonacoric, he wins the tie break 13-11. He saves a bunch of set points. So it is not like Djokovic is destroying his opponents. This is a sign where you can he shows us that. I am not as good as before. And trust me, he isn't. I can see that. He's not hitting his backhand as good as before. Especially not his down-the-line backhand. And his cross-court cross -court backhand as well. Do you know how many winners he did with, with his cross-court backhand against Rafa Nadal in the French Open? Do you know how many winners he did with his cross-court backhand I'm talking now about? With his cross-court backhand, which he can hit on his sleep. He did two winners. Two winners! With his cross court backhand, he did some. He did uh, 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 a couple of uh, winners with his down the line back uh, with with his, with his down the line backhand as well. But I have noticed that he did only two cross court backhand winners against Rafael in French Open final. He, you know, his his back Novak's backhand, it is his Arsenal shot. I know that he. He has a pretty good forehand as well. Pretty underrated forehand, in my opinion. But his forehand can sometimes break down, which he did against Sonego. We did a lot of forehand unforced errors and backhand unforced errors as well and return unforced errors as well. He didn't return superbly. Djokovic had a really bad day against Sonego. I don't think he tanked. That is my opinion. I can be wrong. I'm not, I'm not super confident that he didn't tank. But I, what I saw, I don't think he tanked. Sonego, he fired 26 winners and only 12 on Fosteros. That is huge against a defensive a defensive beast like Djokovic. Who are the best defender players in, in, in the planet, guys? Nadal and Djokovic. These two are the players that are the most hard and most difficult hitting through, no matter surface. And Sonego, he did 26 winners. He went for his shots. He was clobbering that ball. He was unleashing those forehands and those backhands, especially the forehand. And he was serving really big. I think he did eight surveys and zero unforced, uh, zero double faults. Uh, Sonego. Djokovic, on the other hand, he did only three services and three double faults. And Sonego, he served 67% first serves in. That is okay. That is pretty good. To be over 65, it is always really good, in my opinion. 67%. And he won 80% behind those first serves. 80%! That tells you that on the first, on the plus, on the third shot of the, of the game, you know, serve, return, and then immediately, he was clutch. He was on fire. The plus, the plus first serve. 
That is so important. That's what Nadal does so tremendously good. Especially on clay. The, the, the shots from 0 to 4. Nadal is a master on clay. And Sonego was a master in this match. From, four to, from 0 to 4 shots. He killed Novak. He punished him immediately. And another, uh, Novak on the other hand, he didn't do a good match. He didn't do... From the get-go, from the first game, Novak, he just he got broken immediately with an un unusual, unforced errors. In the first game of the match. It was like he was on vacation from the first minute. He was on vacation from the first minute. And he never came back from that vacation of Djokovic. From the first point to the last point. He was in, in Hawaii. Uh, Djokovic didn't serve any good. He, he did 50, 55% first serves. That is not good. To be... Uh, look, as a tennis player, you always want to be over 60% first serves. In, always. Everything under 60% is bad. It is bad. Novak had 55% first serves in. He won 61% behind those first serves, which is okay. Considering that you did serve so low first serves in, it is okay to win 55%. But Novak's big problem was he was not winning any second serves. He was only winning 30% behind his second serve. Only 30%. Sonego, on the, on the other hand, he won 41% behind his second serve. 41% much better than Novak. Sonego was winning much more behind his, both his first serve and both his second serve. 80% behind his first serve, 41% behind his second serve. Novak, 61 behind his second, 61 behind his first serve and only 30% behind his second serve. And when it comes to the clutchness, Novak had six break punch opportunities in the second set. He didn't take one of them. He didn't take one of them. And that is not usual, Novak. Novak is the... You know, who you, when I do my videos, you know what I've said the last couple of years. Novak is the most clutch player in the planet Earth. But he was not clutch in this match. Sonego, on the other hand, he had six breakpoint opportunities. He took five of them. 83%. 83%. He was on converting breakpoints. Five out of six. Novak, zero out of six. Zero percent. And Novak, all in all, he did, uh, I believe he did... Uh, 25 on first errors. That is a lot in, in, a, in a quick match like this. And uh, only seven winners. So Novak, he was not doing any winners at all in this match. And he was spreading the balls all over the place. He was doing so many errors. Novak has just a really, really bad day. Novak showed his horrible, horrible level. You know, guys, what I've said. You know what I've said during these years in my videos. And some of you can say, some of you have given me thumbs down. I know that that those who give me thumbs down from from my from this analysis is Djokovic and Federer fans. Novak and Federer they have it horrible level. They have it. Rafa doesn't have any horrible level. He doesn't have. And don't come up with me here and say no Djokovic tanked. We don't know if he tanked. I don't think he tanked. I am 80% certain that he didn't tank. This was Djokovic horrible level. I don't think Djokovic played nothing like his life was on the line. No, he didn't. Especially not in the second set. In the second set, he was already in, uh, with his hat in Serbia. He was already in Serbia. He just wanted to leave. He just wanted to leave Vienna. But from the first set, he tried. But Sonego, he did his match of his life. Probably did. I had not seen the guy very much. So this is probably not his level. Because he, if this was his level, Sonego, he would have won more than one title in his in his life. He has won only one title in his life. A 250 class tournament last year Antalya in Turkey. Turkey. So, this is not Sonego. And it is not like Sonego is uh, 19 or 20 years old or 18 years old. He's 25 years old. So, uh, Sonego did his match of his life in combination that Novak did his worst match of, of this season for sure. I don't know when I've seen Novak be this weak. I don't know. 6261 against the lucky loser who has not even qualified to play this tournament. 
So uh, no, I didn't see. I'm not. Sh I'm not shocked that Novak lost. All right, don't get me wrong. He will lose more and more. He will, especially outside slams. It is more difficult to take him out in slams. It is because he, he will, he will give more of his effort. He will. He will fight more. We know that. He's this this big giant joke with Nadal and Feder. They will, they will always give more in slams. Especially Djokovic and Federer. They will give all this more Islam. Nadal, he, he gives his best effort everywhere. Nadal, in Nadal's head, in Nadal's mind, it doesn't exist not giving you your best. You're not, you're not giving... He is a warrior, for God's sake. No, it doesn't matter which kind of tournament he plays. 250, 500, or, or a Masters or Grand Slam. He will always give his all he's absolutely all he's he will keep he will take his soul out on the court Djokovic and Federer they will not take their soul out on the court in 250 and 500 class tournaments they will not do it not this late in their careers at least they will not they will not and Djokovic he didn't take his soul out on the court today I'm, I'm, I'm sorry yesterday he didn't he wanted to win absolutely but when he saw that Sonego was just firing all his cylinders and was firing and hitting a bunch of winners from all over the place and he just he just said ah 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 let's i'm tired of this let's just go let's just take the plane home to serbia which he did so all the credit to senegal but i, I don't think he will win the tournament i think the tournament will will, will be win win one won now by rublev all the high seats have been crashing out team did that straight sets medvedev did that straight sets Djokovic did that now, straight set. So, Rublev has had a great year. He has won four tournaments, as many tournaments as, as Djokovic, actually. These two has won most tournaments of, of all the players 2020. And I think Rublev will win his fifth tournament. I just think he will win. I don't know, man. Uh, who can beat him? Sonego. Sone you know, a player like Sonego, he will not do a kind of, uh, the same kind of match in the semifinal. Maybe he will win the semi-final. It is not impossible. But I don't think he will win the final against... Uh, uh, if Sonego goes to that final against Rublev. Ah, maybe I will be wrong. Who knows? I'm not always right. That's for sure. Uh, so, that was one thing. Congrats, congrats to uh, Sonego's first ever top 10 victory, actually. He has never defeated a top 10 player in the, in the past before. Now he d did that. Defeating Novak Djokovic in straight sets. Destroying him. And uh, I hope that you guys now believe me when I say that Nadal has not a horrible level. He has average, good level, super great level, beast mode level. Federer and Djokovic, they have horrible, average, good level, super good level, and beast mode level. That's a big difference. You know, when Nadal lost against Sw uh, uh, Schwarzman in that Rome match a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago, uh, last month, I should say, uh, it, it was not Nadal's horrible level. It was Nadal's average level. Nadal got seven games. And Schwarzman, that was Schwarzman's best match of his life. Schwarzman took out Nadal in that room quarterfinal. 6-2-7-5, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 6-2-7-5. So, it was not like Nadal was horrible. Nadal is never horrible. Even when he loses 6-2 or 6-3, he's never horrible. He will not do a horrible match. He will do average match. Nadal is never horrible. Djokovic and Federer can sometimes be horrible. Uh, Novak Djokovic, he was horrible yesterday. That was one thing. Another thing I want to talk about before I end this video, because now these videos are getting long. Uh, a comment that Djokovic did, actually, a couple of days ago, when he said... Uh, yeah, when he said... Uh, don't judge me only by the slam count. <laughs> oh man, I, I I laugh. I laugh. I, I'm loving this. I'm lo no, I'm not loving this. I'm I'm being sarcasm here. I'm not loving this. I, the reason why I'm laughing is that I can see through these guys. No matter that I don't know these guys. No matter that these guys are strangers. They don't know who we are. They don't know who you are. But I'm a I know people how they work. They always love to promote the things that they do good. Are you not seeing how much Djokovic is promoting the, this to break feathers 310 weeks as world number one, to equal Pistol, Pistol, 
pistol pit samplers and world number one with six times like he's like he is doing now he promotes things that he is achieving but things that he is not an a he's you know he is getting a reality check now Djokovic he is seeing that you know what I will not probably end with most Grand Slam titles Nadal will do that if Nadal is healthy and now he wants to make comments and say to the world you know what if even if I don't end with most Grand Slam titles when it's all said and done look at my world number one as weeks I will break Fed's record look as look at who is ending as world number one in the in, in the entire season it's me with six times as many times as, as, as Sampras so even if Rafa wins more slams than me don't judge me after that Djokovic stop it for God's sakes don't make me mad stop it you think I'm stupid you think you can fool me it was the same thing with Federer when Federer was losing those, those French Open matches with Nadal back in 2005 and 6 and 7 and 8 he was promoting himself and always saying, don't judge me if I never win French Open. Blah, 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 blah. Don't judge me. Federer, for God's sakes, I'm not any kid. You cannot fool me. Djokovic, I'm not any kid. You can't fool me. Do you, do you, do you not, do these guys don't know that we are not stupid? And you two guys are not stupid. You are seeing through them, these guys as well. People love to promote no matter if they are superstars or if they are average people like you and me. They love to promote things that they do good. I don't work like that. Personally, I don't do. I don't care. You know what? I promote things that are good, that are great, no matter if I achieve them or not. I'm like that. I'm always honest. You know, I'm, I'm that kind of guy. I don't care if... I'm not like... I don't hide the truth. Even if my sister, it is my brother, it is my cousin, it is my wife, it is my own sons, all my, all my own kids. If they have one thing that they are not good, I will say that to them in a kind way. Not in a brutal way, in a kind way. I will say, you know what, you should change this kind of behavior, man. It is not good. You are better than this. I will never praise them and say, man, you are good, you are good. Even if they are not good in something, for example, they have a bad behavior in something. I will, not, I will never... I will never lie to them. The same thing with these superstars. They're trying to promote things that they are good at. Feder did always that before the, he won French Open. But when he won French Open 2009, he never talked about that anymore. Because he won it. He finally won it. But before he won it, he wanted to... And he wanted to protect himself and say, Don't judge me if I never win French Open. Boom! I get so... I get so I get so angry. I I, I get so disappointed. Not angry because I almost never get angry, but I get so disappointed because they think they they think we are stupid. The same thing with Djokovic now when he did that comment like, a couple of days ago. Don't judge me if only by the Grand Slam count because he's having a reality check. He knows that it will be really difficult to end with most slams. He he knows that how because only him knows how difficult it is to win Grand Slams because we don't know as much as he knows. It is not any walk in the park to win Grand Slams for him. Not, especially not this late of his career. He's 33 years old. That as a Lopen back in January, not back, further in January in 2021, is a must win for him. If he doesn't win as Lopen, bye-bye to the Grand Slam record. Bye-bye catching Rafael Nadal. So, that Djokovic makes that kind of statement, that kind of comment, don't judge me only by the Grand Slam count, I am not buying that. He doesn't fool me. And I don't think that you guys are, you are also very smart people, I know that, that he doesn't fool you as well. He, jo he just wants to protect himself, he just wants to promote things he does good. People always work like that majority of the people, only the good human beings with big hearts, they are always honest. People who are people with big egos, you know, big egos, these superstars, they, they all, they are all big egos. Federer, Nadal, and Djokovic. Do, 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 you, you don't think they have big egos? They, are, they have. I swear to you, they have. Uh, and 
majority of the people who are not famous as well, they have big egos. You know, people, they always wanted to, to, to have, I have the best job, I have the best car, I have the best house. I get so freaking tired of that, that kind of people. I, I am not like that. I, I never praise, you know, I never praise my things. I have car, I have house. I never do that. It is not the way I operate. That is not my behavior. And Djokovic, Djokovic, stop it, Djokovic. You can't fool me. I'm going to tell you to Djokovic, because Djokovic will never see this video, but the Djokovic fans, I don't care if you give me thumbs down. If Djokovic doesn't end up with more slams, if Djokovic he ends up in the second race or the third race, now he's in the third place at the current moment. Nadal and Federer are 20, Djokovic at is at 17. He never will be considered as the GOAT. I swear to you, never, never Djokovic. So don't try to protect yourself by saying, look at my world number one, look at my ending world number one of the season. I have, I, I will break Fedor's record. I will equal Sampras record. Yeah, that is great achievements. Absolutely. Nothing, I'm, I'm not taking anything away from him on, 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 on those occasions. But that will never mean that he will be considered as the GOAT if he ends up with less on Grand Slam titles than Rafael Nadal. No matter what he, tr what he tries to say to us. We don't buy that kind of stuff. Interi Terry doesn't buy it. And I don't think you will buy that either, beside the Novak Djokovic fans. I know, though they will always, uh, of course, they will promote things that Djokovic do, does good. I promote that. I'm not saying that to end as world number one six times, it's, it's a bad achievement. It's a huge achievement. To have a break that record through 310 weeks like he will do next year in March, it's a huge achievement. I'm not taking this, those kinds of things away. But those are not bigger achievements than winning most Grand Slam titles. Never. I don't know how many times I need to say this to my audience, to the people around the world, wherever you are on the planet Earth. All respect to Masters, all respect to Olympic Golds, all respect to Ottawa True Finals. All respect being world number one many times in the week, over 300 weeks, like Djokovic will be. All respect to end as world number one in the season six times, like Djokovic has been now, he can repeat Pistol Pete's record. Nothing, absolutely nothing, comes close to winning most Grand Slam titles. And I don't care where you win them, because some of you say, ah, Fred Chopin is on your clay. Don't come with me. Don't come with me. Don't come with me. Don't just don't, don't do it. Just don't, just don't do it. French Open is clay. French Open is tennis as well. It is not a different sport. And I've talked about this before. Rafa winning 30, 30 French Open. That makes, that makes him even a bigger, a bigger player. He has only one chance where he can show his master class, where he can show on his best surface in only one chance. He has played that tournament 16 times. He has won it 13 times. Two losses and one time he got injured. And was forced to withdraw. Djokovic and Federer, there are three opportunities. Astral Open, Wimbledon, US Open, which are fat, hard, which are fast surfaces. And Nadal, he's leading them with one, with one opportunity. Yeah, Nadal plays the other three as well, of course. But you know what I'm, you, you are getting my point. So don't come with me and say, Rafa is winning only Fred Chopin. He can never be the GOAT. Don't make me angry because I don't like being angry. I almost never get angry. All right? Don't come up with me with that kind of BS. With that kind of BS talk. Don't come up with me. All right? I have, I will I don't want to I don't want to read any comments and saying Nadal is only a clay goat. Don't come up with me. Just don't come up. I'm not, I swear to God, I'm not a Rafa Nadal fan. I swear to God. But I'm a fan of the truth. I'm a fan of the truth. I love the truth. I am crazy in love on the truth. With the truth. The Grand Slams are the most prestige things, thing in tennis. The most prestige thing in tennis. All the other records, all the other tournaments, all the other achievements in tennis, they come second, third, fourth, and fifth place. Grand Slams is on the first place. No matter where you win them. No matter where you win them. I hope 
that you have understand. Okay, guys, because this video is getting brutal long. 30 minutes. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Take care and bye-bye.